start? So yeah, let's let's start the the, the presentation. Um, so first of all, thank you for the organizer to, to for this invitation to this um, international forum in Brussels. Um, maybe first to to start this presentation, may we have a small interaction with uh, with the audience, uh, not quantity but quality audience. Um, to, to, to check, first one, when you are about international sanction, what do you feel and what do you, uh, what do you think about? And then, um, if you have already some experience with international sanction, um, maybe if we have a, a microphone to, 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 to give you and to, to have an interaction. Joanna? Um, well, first, first point I would think is, can I do business in that country? And uh, if Absolutely. yes, under what circumstances? Yeah, all is possible, you know, and this is our role as legal counsel or lawyer to, 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 to secure all the risk and all the legal financial risk to, to have business in targeted and sanctioned country, even if in Iran. Uh, I'm just back for two days from Tehran, and now many companies, okay, no US company, but European and Asian company and African company are doing business in Iran. Um, but Iran, this is the most popular case, but there is many other cases as Iraq, Russia, true. Uh, Ukraine, Sudan, um, Cuba. Um, and business is definitely possible and allowed, but we have to check about some point and some issue to avoid any sanction. And fine. Aida, were you yes. saying something? Uh, there, there was a sanction for the, by um, on behalf of the NAFTA, the North American Trade Agreement for Mexico for the tuna fish, the capturing mm -hmm. of the tuna fish. That they were um, the U.S. sanctioned Mexico for the capturing of tuna fish with the uh, dolphins. So it's, uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Anybody else? Yes. This is definitely a huge matter, you know, and you're totally right. Um, so just we will have a s short and summarized presentation. Unfortunately, uh, this matter we can speak during one or two full days and more about uh, sanction and um, international regulation and how to import dual use good um, to, 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 to avoid any problem. But um, just we will have short overview and then speak later if you if you want if you need um, as we have this expertise many people now ought to becoming um, expert or many um, having more and more experience about this topic so let's do, let's see any other question um, idea about this topic just preliminary idea before starting As a general counsel uh, producing those uh, high tech uh, globally, we always uh, face with those international sanctions. Um, um, the difficulties is those uh, conflicting sanctions. Uh, on one hand, is certainly the U.S. consider all their sanction, uh, in, even including those say uh, export control regulation, have this so-called extraterritorial effects. Equally, China have the same concept. Um, we started to enforce the uh, cybersecurity law and then the concept of uh, cyber sovereignty and data localization is a key theme globally now. 
Mm. And then so uh, for uh, ourselves, like uh, we have about 20,000 employees globally, and uh, most of our hardware are produced here in Europe, uh, while those software are developed in the US, and most of the big part and eventually assembled in China, those machines. And then certainly on one hand is this US content control, then they certainly, you have mentioned rightly, um, they have a sanction on Iran. Well, then we don't have to support that sanction because China want to do business with Iran. We have different policy strategy. And then the difficulties is uh, as a, a global company stuck in the middle of those conflicting sanctions. For instance, on one hand, all those uh, equipments or uh, product service having US contents will be subject to the export control screening. And then once that is done in terms of, for the purpose of compliance with the US rule or mm -hmm. sanction or regulation, we will say in China this, this, discover, reveal sensitive information, which under the US rule we need to reveal, disclose to the US uh, subsidiaries. On the other hand, we under, under the Chinese national security rule and also the cyber security rule, if we do disclose that piece of information which is considered to be sensitive, we are immediately in breach of the Chinese national security rule. So then if we do disclose, we are imprisoned by the, under the Chinese law. If we don't, then our subsidiary in, in, in the US uh, was only in deep trouble because for the breach of uh, compl uh, the uh, export control, like what uh, the most recent case for uh, Zhongxing, the Chinese company was fined about a billion US dollar after the Chinese uh, fined the US uh, one billion RMB. I don't know whether this is retaliation, but then it's just uh, as a company stuck in the middle of those global conflicts, how you will be able to avoid any litigation or any uh, sanctions uh, if you are really uh, facing with these conflicting rules between, say, China and the U.S., what do you do? Um, it's already, you know, conflict of law is already, is always difficult case and issue. Um, to, it's always made difficult to, to manage it. Um, and you're totally right. There is difficult, um, different conflicting law uh, to 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 insert international matters. But um, that said, we definitely can do business by respecting um, U.S. law. The problem is the extraterritoriality of U.S. law, because um, the application is very large, very broad. So we have to check um, to manage and to secure the business and to avoid any um, intrusion of U.S. interest. And by this way, you can have some, some, some business through your, 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 your other law. Well, then, because um, the current approach is uh, both the U.S. and China and other European uh, nations are having this trend that eventually, even though this is a corporate uh, behavior or business matter, then they will eventually enforce the law uh, against the key management staff. Uh, and then uh, most of the export control and also the Chinese cyber security and national security law always carry this criminal liability. So if that is a, uh, ultimately important that you keep at least those uh, management staff safe. So if you say you have to comply with the U.S. rule, are you saying that you are putting the Chinese uh, staff operating in Chinese, in China border into prison, including the U.S. Uh, staff? If they tr ever travel to China, they will be arrested. And then yeah. certainly all the Chinese uh, management uh, member, if they ever, if they stay in China, say, what you can do? You can do nothing. You can send your police officer here, then certainly they cannot. But then if the Chinese management is going to, because we do travel every month into the, Chinese, into the U.S. border, we'll be arrested. And then this is a key, this is very important for the safety of the um, management. And then you do need to have a solution. And then we don't have a solution now. And then it's not the saying that the U.S. is strong, but then they are strong within their border. And the Chinese equally is strong in terms of if you cross the Chinese border. And then what do you do to keep the safety of at least 
personal safety, not breach the criminal law, not to have any staff member being in the prison. You know, on one hand, that's on one hand. On the other hand, certainly, it's always carry substantial fine, like in always in billions and in millions. Uh, I'm totally not really agree because definitely you can um, you can do something even if you you are working with US. This is not the this is not the matter. And but just you have to 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 be confident and to check. To, and to be compliant uh, with the whole regulation to avoid any conflict, in the, uh, conflict of interest and conflict of law. So I'm actually personally facing with this problem. We have actually discovered the uh, information which under the U.S. Uh, export control yeah. rule, we need to disclose, reveal to the U.S. But then if we do so, then our Chinese staff will immediately in breach of the Chinese security law and then we will be uh, in deep trouble, so we cannot do either way. And then, what do we do? Well, I think it's also a matter of, uh, you know, checking really what are we talking about. Because if we start talking, let's say, you know the facts. So the fact that you have more information, and right now it's from this stage, it's kind of difficult to give you a black and white answer. Like, you should do this or that, because I'm sure there are facts that uh, uh, should be analyzed in a better way, looking at the documents differently, because there must be a spot where we can identify what is the best solution and the first thing as you said before we don't want anybody to go to jail we don't want any criminal law to be breached and therefore um i think what you said is a very interesting point but it's not in my view possible provide an answer without seeing the documents and knowing all the facts and unfortunately we don't have the time right now to analyze the facts so it would be very interesting maybe for a discussion later That's with right. more info but i think you really touch a very good point because it's different when you have let's say more rules and you can just simply say let's do precautionary the strictest one mm. okay that that could be an option but one thing is when you have conflicted rules and then you have to decide what do we do which one do we you know take present to but but thank you because i think was a very interesting point okay. i think there were a couple of questions there just one there I think the point of our friend from China uh, is very real. No? I'm from the Philippines. Yeah. Uh, I myself encountered the situation where disclosing it to our government would cause or expose the client to sanctions in the counterparty government and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So what I personally did was uh, to check, let's assume, uh, I assume that if I disclose it in the Philippines, pursuant to Philippine law, or as required to Philippine law, uh, then there is that potential liability, criminal sanction in the other country. And what I ask to be checked is, would disclosing it in our home country mm -hmm. constitute a defense under the uh, foreign uh, for foreign countries law, no? Because in the Philippines, for example, we have a defense such as justifying or exempting mm -hmm. circumstances. For, for example, you do something because of an insuperable cause or in obedience to a governmental order, that is a justifying, that may constitute a justifying circumstance. So uh, we had that check, no? And that may be an approach, no? That uh, is, would that with this, would the compliance with a foreign government's law uh, re mandatory required by a foreign government's law be a defense under the local law of the other jurisdiction. That's, that's just my, my thought about it. No? Because, you know, as you uh, pointed out, the conflict law, especially in a criminal proceeding, is a yeah. very difficult question. No? So Definitely. it's a time if you do, time if you don't, so to speak. <laughs> Good. Uh, if we don't have more questions right now, I think we can jump into So let's start the small presentation. Is, you know, it's quite different about the way we, we, we speak earlier this morning or yesterday. Um, it will be may maybe um, more, I don't know, more practical uh, on such point and more theoretical. Let's see and feel free to interact if you, if you, if you want, if you need. Um, we open definitely to, to, to discussion. 
So let's have the, the, the first view about, um, about what we speak. Um, first, small definition about international sanction and then uh, uh, overview about the main um, sanction regime. First, uh, US, then European, and after United Nations. As um, the, the, these three main regimes are always not conflicting but going together and we have to, 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 to check um, international companies and international law firm have to check for their clients um, all these regimes before to, 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 to provide due diligence. Uh, then a small point about uh, banking system um, as one of the major cases when you are going to, 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 for example, to Iran is how to transfer money from Europe to Iran. Definitely from USA it's not possible, but from other places uh, there is some solution and let's see how to manage it. And then I would like to speak about a practical case to, 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 to explain you um, how it's possible to, to, for, for doing business with a targeted country um, by respecting the sanction. And then last point is a small advice for international company, international law firm, how to do and to secure our client's business. So first one, uh, let's see that international sanction or coercive measure against a targeted person, entities, and states. Um, it's definitely an alternative to use of armed force, um, as now um, the classical war we we, we could uh, know uh, during the first war, the first world war, the second world war, are definitely. Um, are, are off, uh, and now the, the, the new type of war is economic war through the sanction, and countries such as USA are using maybe too much, let's, um, it's personal view, um, this type of war, um, and they can take many forms such as commercial barriers or financial uh, transactions. Um, you know the um, goal or may why the sanction or imposed or decided is to to is for inter economic or political goal so to 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 how can we say for um, encourage to a changement of regime of political regime or to um, penalize and to constrain um, certain sectors such as in Iran, oil and gas sector. Um, and just let's uh, speak about what is an embargo because uh, very often we have a confusion be be between international sanction and embargo. And just let's see that embargo is a type of sanction. This is not, um, this is a common word that many journalists are very often using, but it's quite wrong because embargo just is a type of sanction, is commercial um, sanction on certain goods and products. So let's see now the main sanction regime. Um, we can dis distinguish four uh, regimes. First one is the most important is from USA. Uh, then from United Nations as is a more global and it should be Let's see, and let's think what you want. Uh, it should be the only one with, uh, which has been to, 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 to be efficient on, the, on our um, earth and on our economic world. But uh, this is not the case. Then the European Uni Union has um, now this uh, entity um, has to be the, the, the first one um, economic entity and has to take some decision and to 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 measure um, and political and economic measure to to um, to constrain uh, other country for doing business and then national restrictions such as Canada Australia Japan North Korea or Switzerland um, this is um, not the major case and these measures are just um, following the US and European measures. So let's not 
not speak about this national restriction as um, it's not the more important and we will just focus on the first three one. So just a short overview about the United Nations eyes. Um, this is not the, it's quite difficult to, 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 to speak about this one. I, this is not coercive measure um, as, as I have to be transposed in domestic law of each country, of each member country. country. So uh, this is to, to, to discretion of each country to, to, to apply this measure. And it's very hard to, to have many important measures from the United Nations, just the uh, last very important one or from Iran or Iraq, uh, but or North Korea, Somalia, and against Al-Qaeda too. But um, this is not the, the most common, and it's not necessary to, to have a, um, um, more foreign point. So, but just uh, short words, the uh, measure of United Nations uh, are focused on global economic and commercial sanctions, arms embargo, travels ban, financial diplomatic restriction, and international <coughs> action that, uh, um, for respect of the peace. Um, but the most important one are from USA. Um, you will see that it's very large and very broad measure uh, with um, large notion of extraterritoriality. And because these measures are applied to any US citizen, uh, any person being in the US territory, even if not, um, not US citizen, so for European or uh, other uh, citizen, any company registered in USA, any affiliates to the area of US company, even not um, on the US territory, so for any um, country, and any foreign company affiliate of solidarity uh, located in USA, and for any commercial transaction made by a non-US person entity, but with US uh, interest, that means with payment of in US dollar, or as we said, with dual goods, uh, that means um, with good uh, manufactured or made in USA. Even, for example, uh, for um, aircraft items uh, just made uh, for 10 or 20 percent in USA, uh, they are um, governed by US law and by US sanction. So, you know, for example, by um, Airbus who want to, to sell some uh, aircraft to a targeted country, uh, they have to check with US administration as uh, some uh, items of motors uh, are made by Rolls-Royce, for example, um, in USA. Uh, and they have to, to, to get the authorization of uh, US administration um, um, in case the OFAC, Office for Foreign Asset Control, this is a subsidiary of US Treasury. Yeah. If the, if the goods uh, uh, to be manufactured or created uh, has nothing to do with the, with the U.S. territory and your only concern is the mode of payment, perhaps one advice would be maybe consider payment in Chinese yuan or something so that you're not covered by, by the last bullet point because it's unbelievably extensive. Mm. It's unbelievably extensive. It implies some kind of dominance that... Um, yeah, I'm telling you, it's uh, one would naturally resist. Uh, well, my takeaway from that is simple transactions as transferring funds yeah. uh, from one country to another, simply because it's done in international U.S. currency, you're immediately exposed to sanctions. I think um, it's quite me, true. Yeah, I probably know this, but it's still unfair looking at it on the board. Yeah, but very often there is quite difference between what is allowed, what is uh, permitted, and the reality. Yeah. You know, this is quite the problem, and this is why you have to, to, to check with due diligence to avoid any problem um, with targeted. Because 
Um, and this is why um, US law um, and extraterritoriality of US law is very large and very broad because um, it's sometimes or very often more large than the, the theory and what is uh, expected in the rules and the text. And this is why all the aspects and all the cases should have been um, studied and submitted to avoid any application of sanctions. Um, so let's continue. Um, and in USA, we have a three type of sanction. That's, that means the global one um, on focused on restriction uh, in, on USD payment, such as for Cuba, Syria, uh, and Iran. Uh, that means that uh, no payment in USD are definitely possible for this country. Uh, partial sanction just is um, commercial sanction on um, focused and targeted entity and listed sanction targeting just activities or person or um, person belonging to a regime. And this is definitely not the most important, but they have to take it into consideration to avoid any, any, any risk. Um, definitely, you will see that European Union sanction or regime sanction are um, less large than US because uh, European Union is trying to respect human rights and um, the freedom of business. Um, maybe sometimes it's, uh, we can say it's uh, problematic because um, USA is more protective and than, than, than Europe, but um, let's see that the sanctions are applied on, uh, only to European citizens where, where they, 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 they are based or working. Any entity registered in a member state of the European Union and to any affiliate subsidiary, any commercial transaction made in part or totally on the territory of European Union, and uh, on bo a board of any vessel and aircraft register in a member state of European Union. So we can see that there is no uh, matter about payment in Euro, and that is definitely, um, it's permitted more possibility for doing business. Uh, but um, it's very, um, USA and Europe are allowing a type of, of exemption to, for doing business in such, con, in such targeting uh, countries such as in Iran or in Iraq. Uh, for, and they allow not very easily, but if you have a full documentation, you can doing business uh, for, by getting some exemption, for example, with general license for any humanitarian um, transaction and for specific lessons, but uh, it's quite hard and very long to get one. So um, procedure is still possible to, 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 to be managed, but um, uh, the chance of, uh, six to, to succeed are very, are very low, unfortunately. Uh, once again, um, it's a protective measure from USA uh, let's see uh, why USA could, uh, could sell some Boeing to Iran and for Airbus it's take many months. Um, the, one of the most important questions um, for country, targeted country uh, by USA is how to, to transfer money. Uh, because when you are doing business, you are setting up a company uh, or an affiliate in a targeted country. Uh, you are um, producing or manufacturing some goods, but what you want is to get back your money in your um, origin country, in your headquarters. So um, it has been uh, definitely not possible for many years uh, in Iran, and the company had to, to put the money on a bank account and to, for example, to, to, to buy some building um, to, to, to save the money. Uh, as it was not possible to, to transfer. 
Um, the problem is that the international uh, banking system is managed by USA. Uh, so banking trans transactions are not totally free and open with uh, certain countries, unfortunately. Um, and for example, for Iran or for um, Cuba or Iraq or North Korea, you cannot provide any USD payment. Um, but there is, uh, while the, the, the SWIFT system is now uh, open with these, uh, with these countries, but um, any other transaction are possible, so you can, um, what you can do is to open an affiliate in Europe and then to provide payment in Euro as such European bank uh, in France, um, in Belgium, in Germany, in Italy, in Spain, in Austria, uh, so not say the whole list, but uh, many banks, small banks, not the biggest one, um, allowing and permitted some um, transaction, banking transaction with targeted country. Uh, this means that it's not the most important bank like BNP or HSBC or um, um, Societe Generale, because just we have, uh, we should keep in mind the fine imposed to BNP Paribas uh, in 2012, uh, so, sorry, uh, 15, of um, 9, milliard, 9 billion dollars. Uh, just because this bank has violated the sanction between 2000 and 2010. Um, so now the most important bank are very um, careful to, to, to for doing transaction with targeted country as I don't want as I want um, avoid any problematic um, and not to, to, to have some fine. Um, but let's have a, a, a small example if you don't have any question for, for this point. Uh, how for doing business uh, for in anyone, uh, I decide to, to have an um, uh, example of a cruise, international cruise company wanting to operate in Iran. Why? Because um, I have an experience in the shipping industry and um, now we have many clients uh, in the shipping industry wanting to, to operate again in Iran as there, there is some possibilities for container carriers or cruise carriers for going in this country as there is two seas and many costs and many ports. So um, many points have to be, to be checked. Um, first one, um, uh, doing the booking, so before the cruise, um, you have to check um, if uh, no people, um, sorry, uh, you have to, to, the booking has not to be done uh, even in USA or by a US citizen. Then no payment in US dollar have to be done as the um, goal of the cruise or the shipment is US, is E1. And then uh, SDN, you have to check uh, within the OFAC list, which is called SDN, Special Designated National. Uh, it's a list with 5,000 names, um, um, blocking some personals and entities um, to, for not doing business with them. If you, are, if you are trying, you are definitely exposed to sanction too. Um, and so, and then during the quiz, so you have not to 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 allow USD payment as um, payment or not uh, USD payment or not allowed in Iran. And we could have the last news some weeks ago that the Iranian central bank is trying to to prohibit any USD in the whole country. Um, definitely, it's quite difficult case for them, but uh, this is what they could find to to reply to U.S. sanction. Um, be careful to not sell alcohol in Iran, as uh, Sharia law is uh, forbidden um, alcohol. So even if you are um, 
causing in the Iranian seas, you have to respect the Iranian law. And uh, then no selling of US goods is uh, the same point we say, uh, it's included um, uh, goods manufactured uh, even in part in USA. So this is very restrictive. Uh, and many points have to be checked, but uh, you can see that um, for some business, um, it's possible to manage and to, for doing business with targeted country, just uh, the point is for doing due, due diligence and be careful. And then there is some technic technical point, for example, in the shipping industry, uh, you have to be insured and to have a PNI, a Protection and Indemnity Club. Um, so, but let's be careful to, 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 to have a PNI, not first one, not US PNI, and not a PNI. Um, and to be checked with your PNI that uh, you are covered for your for your activities in Iran, as uh, what they are very careful in, they cover your risk. All. Um, only if they can be uh, cover their risk. So this is a reinsurance topic. And very often the reinsurer are US uh, entities. Um, so what we can advise uh, as a law firm is um, there is many, many points. Uh, first one, you have to, to, for to provide due diligence to clients. Um, and our vision is that um, all is possible, even um, except if it's permitted. So, you know, to the client, it's very important to, to say that, um, that uh, to say yes, and then to check the case, because um, what is important for, for, for all commercial entities is doing business, and there is no limit, just the earth. Um, so to avoid any risk, um, it, no transaction has to be done with SDN listed person and entities, uh, no US payment for, for certain countries, uh, definitely set up an affiliate is possible, but uh, by not using SDN member um, too, um, and to, when you are you have some 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 uh, dubbed just a law transaction for United Nations shipment, and then we can add that um, control have to be done. Uh, that means a priori control and a posteriori control. A priori is as said uh, with SDN listed personal entities to check that your exporter, your importer, your carrier is not listed. Um, and you have to, to the client have to, uh, to, to have a, a database which he will scan with keyword to avoid any sanction. Um, and then a posteriori control is mean an audit of agencies and partners to, to double check that they are respecting international um, regulation. Um, it means that you have to cooperate with authorities because when you are familiar with authorities, you know precisely what is possible, what is permitted. Uh, that means that with uh, United Nations, uh, you can have very easily contact with a panel of experts of Cuba or Iran, uh, with European Union, uh, contact with the European Commission, and with national uh, different, dif different countries. Um, sometimes it can be more difficult to have contacts with OFAC in USA, but uh, they organize and set up for meeting um, quite easily. Um, and the last point is, um, um, is to include uh, into contract, into commercial contracts, some sanction clauses. Uh, that means that uh, if a transaction in relation with a targeted country or state or person um, is noted, um, the transaction has to be null and void and the contract can be terminated um, immediately um, by the non-breaching party at breaching party costs and expenses. Um, definitely, um, now it's very common to find, uh, to find sanction clauses in, into commercial contract. Uh, lawyer are definitely recommend it, and compliance department of international companies and too. Um, but then uh, these clauses has to be updated according to the 
uh, to the sector of your client. You can ask your question, sorry. Um, just to go in deep into the point, to set up an affiliate is possible, with, but we know as the end member and having no link with you as interest. Yeah. My question is the following. Are we talking about uh, a company who has a appearing company in the US and is trying to set an affiliate outside in order to avoid this? Or what's the scenario? Because my question is related to the fact that uh, um, wor having worked for an uh, American company mm -hmm. for many years, actually for more than one American company, but we always said to the people that were asking, okay, but don't worry, we're not going to involve any U.S. citizen. We're doing everything by our Lebanon office, for example. Yeah. No shipment, no payment, nothing else. Uh, we were always very strict because the fact that the company in Lebanon was not having any SDN member or mm -hmm. was not uh, making payment in USD, uh, for us was not sufficient because anyway, simply the fact of being uh, a subsidiary of an American company that was... Sufficient. Yeah, it's linked, definitely. Okay, so w can you help me to understand what would be the case of setting up an affiliate, of an affiliate... Uh, of European or okay, so Asian company. Okay, okay, definitely, so sure. um, if you, are, you want to set up an affiliate of, Europe, of US company, you are linked to US interests, so yeah. you cannot. And if you are going to such targeting country, you will not see any... Um, U.S. company and any affiliate. Um, it's not allowed. Okay, so I wanted just to make sure yeah. that we are yeah, not yeah. talking about... Yeah, it has to be, to be uh, more detailed. Yeah, def definitely. Okay, yeah, definitely. okay thank you. F just to be cl clarified. Uh, maybe, can, can I ask a question? Like, what's your experience uh, with... Uh, it, do you guys normally um, have any transaction with Iran? Have you had similar issues or... Is a country that you don't work with. Yes, I, I got one contract where uh, it was a big corporation who was under contract with the Navy and wanted to operate also uh, for a specific product with the Republic of Iran. So we had to make an assessment of the staff who was higher in the U.S. in terms of uh, also the affiliates and subsidiaries that were involved. We had to be in contact also with the U.S. authorities and mm -hmm. we have... Yeah, Okay. So, because it was the main, uh, the US Navy was the main contractor, so they didn't want to lose it. Thank mm. you. Michael? Yes, uh, just uh, remembering one case uh, where we had yeah. this American involvement. Uh, I worked for uh, one of the power uh, equipment producing companies mm. in uh, Switzerland, and we had a competition. Uh, it was a deliverance to Sudan, mm. and then we had to go via OFAC. And the, the counterpart, or the other competitor, was an American company. And we got stranded in OFAC, I mean, by, by the procedural. And we unfortunately ended up also in an election interval, which means that half a year before the election, all authorities more or less closed down their approval mechanism because I don't know if they are going to be there after the election. The interesting thing was that this American, other major electric uh, 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 product uh, producer, they actually got the allow. Uh, they were allowed to take the, the project in Sudan, and I never understood how that was uh, managed because they were certainly an American entity, very well known. But they managed to, in some case, use their Turkish subsidiary, and by that, they say, uh, go uh, go, so they uh, avoid the the U.S. connection. And I've heard the similar stories. So, so the, the U.S. Uh, rules are absolutely d very strict, and you can very easily get caught up in them. But there seems to be ways around it also for, for, for U.S. entities, which is... Uh, so that's just a reflection and an experience. I mean, uh, how they do it, I don't know, but... Uh, I can make a comment on that. Um, I remember once... I was informed uh, three years after somebody made a transaction from, um, I think it was Lebanon, if I'm not mistaken, with Iran. And uh, we were part of an American company. And the only way they could do it, because they didn't inform the legal department or anybody else. And when you know there was uh, this big issue, because of course it was not allowed, the answer was, but we are in Lebanon. What's the issue? <laughs> so I, 
I don't know, of course, if that's the case or not, but it, what happened to me, in my experience, yeah. the issues came when people didn't inform the legal department and they just proceeded because they thought it was okay. Because there was, in the, and in their view, was, there was not a direct connection because uh, the fact that the subsidiary was, uh, they didn't have any uh, board of director members from the state was sufficient <laughs> for uh, not considering them a U.S. person or an interested U.S. person. So, uh, I, and I believe there are many cases, but I, again, I don't know if that's the, maybe in that case could have been something different. But in my opinion, uh, I mean, in my experience happened for actually another reason, simply not informing <laughs> the people that should have been involved. I don't know if you had a similar experience. Or not. Yeah. And then I, I'm not, 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 uh, not really something to add because you are quite, uh, quite uh, true and, and yeah. Sorry? Yes. Yeah, so. Can you talk about what you think about the OFAC licensing process? Yeah. Um, this topic is just for... Um, you can have some license to export or import your goods. Um, it's these goods or U.S. goods, for example, if you want to get to, to, to get uh, OFAC licenses, um, goods manufactured or made in USA. So you have to check um, as a law firm with the OFAC to provide, to, to, to have a contact with them and then to provide all the detailed information about the goods, how they are made, where they are made and um, the component of all the goods. And then the procedure is checked with the, with the commission of the OFAC, uh, which allowed or not to import the, or to export uh, your goods. But uh, once again, the problematic is not to, 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 to start the procedure, is to get the result and positive result. Because um, uh, OFAC is quite uh, permitted some, ex, uh, some um, licenses for U.S. companies, but it can be more difficult for foreign companies. You know, uh, international sanction is the topic uh, on the line between legal, political, and economic uh, side. So, um, to to succeed for your your request with your fac, the most important case and advice is to have some good lobbyists, uh, lobbying people in USA and into the, the Senate and um, Congress to, to convince our fact members to give you your, your, your license. Um, it's always the same problem with USA. USA uh, are providing some rules, clear rules, but not respecting always these rules. Uh, this is now the case with the Vienna Agreement. It's called GCPOA, signed 2015. Um, it definitely very theoretical. Uh, USA are allowing certain uh, exporting of certain goods and transaction with certain sector. But uh, in the reality, this is not the case. Uh, it should have been the case, for, for example, for banking transaction, but now if you are working on this topic, you will see that banking transactions are not free. So for the, to, 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 to come back to the OFAC license, um, it's a long procedure, costly, but uh, and it will be more easy to get it for important clients such as definitely very important company, European and Chinese company, uh, than for small company. So, uh, so if your client is a small company, it can be more difficult to get it. Um, not really. 
There is, uh, but it's very definitely very political and sensitive case. When, when, when you prepare the, the, the file to be uh, submitted to the, uh, to the OFAC, you must have some guidelines. What you put have. In your, in your file. Uh, can't be you have, but name, you, 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 ca you can never know the result. Even if you okay. think to have good chance to, to have a positive success and positive result, you can never be sure about the, the solution. And once again, one of the major points is the lobbying uh, to the OFAC. This is um, one of the key points in the US system. Um, so um, now this is... Uh, almost the end. So thank you so much for your attention, for your understanding. Um, feel you free to, 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 to let me know if you have more comment, more questions. Um, um, I'm still here. Uh, or to, to, to come back later to, to, to us um, with other points. Um, maybe you, you want to add something? I have a obvious question, but yeah. I need to ask it. What do you think is changing with the actual situations in the state after the last election? Nothing. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Nothing. It's quite true because, uh, okay, USA have decided to elect a new president and this is quite different from Obama. This is a reality. Uh, however, uh, now he's speaking a lot on Twitter or on other social network, but um, it will not change uh, the thing. Now th things are moving in the good way. You know, um, what is more important to check is the result of the election in Iran. For example, if you are just, if you are focused on Iran. Um, if you are focused on this country, uh, you, you can see that the population one month ago have decided to, to elect Rouhani. So um, change are going, things are going and moving forward in the same way. And Iran, uh, on the last 40 years, um, did not doing business with USA, and, but with other countries, and it will continue. Uh, just the only one thing is that um, it will be not more difficult, but you have to wait for maybe four years uh, for US company to, 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 to going back in such targeting country. Um, you know what happened, for example, three weeks ago in Saudi Arabia with uh, the agreement on arms is something very political. Um, in the Middle East, Iran is the only one country uh, which is uh, shit. Uh, so, um, Saudi Arabia is a Sunnah country. Um, so what did Trump is not, he has not decided, just uh, is an order from Saudi Arabia. And let's see in the next year, now uh, change or no, things are not changing, um, but um, uh, international agreements have been signed and will be respected. Um, but the um, Iran has lived be for now the last 30 years in a war, econ like a war economy. Uh, and if you are going in this country, you will see that, I, that you have the most modern thing. You have Apple, for example. This is US brand. You have the modern cars. You can, you can buy a Mercedes or a Porsche. Uh, you it's going like in Europe, but uh, just what is difficult is for doing business with ch in certain sectors, um, but things will not change. Thank you. Any comment on this or any other topic that uh, you had touched? No? I think everybody's hungry. <laughs> <laughs> So I really wanted to thank you for... Great thank speech. you. Uh, we had to be two, but... Uh, uh, so thank you for hearing me. And I hope uh, it's uh, some question you can, you, you can have about this topic are now more clear. Um, 
and let's see. Thanks.